Welcome, this is the Dynamics Newton's First Law of Motion lecturing. Here I'm just going to be covering only part one. A force. What is a force? A force by definition is a push or a pull and it is considered to be a vector. The variable for force we use as the large F and the units for it is in Newton's after Sir Isaac Newton. Like I said, forces are vector qualities. They have both magnitude and direction. And your vector addition and subtraction does apply here. Forces will always involve two objects. To distinguish the two entities, one is going to be called the object and the other one is called the agent. In this problem, the object is the entity that pushes or pulls by the agent. In this example, the object the object would be the carts because it is being pushed by the person. That person would be considered the agent. It is the entity that is doing the pushing or the pulling that is causing the object to, to experience some form of motion. In this problem, it is the person. The watermelon that is in the cart is, um, I, is not the object nor the agent. Okay, it is in the cart, but it doesn't really do anything because the woman is not pushing the watermelon. She's pushing the cart. Okay. There are two major types of forces that we talk about in this class. Um, contact forces are when you physically touch the object. Things like the applied force, the spring force, the frictional force, and the normal force. The drag force you will experience and you are in contact with. Um, in, in the air, but you won't have a lot of questions on drag. Your long range forces are forces that act over a, uh, a distance. Mathematically, we talk about these as fields because they are calculated by um, a f um, with a field equation. Okay, they're gonna have um, inverse re relationships. Okay, the ones that we um, deal with in this class is the gravitational force and the electric force. Okay, or the electric field and the gravitational field. The magnetic force and the magnetic field does exist, but it is no longer in the physics one curriculum. So what is it, an object or a system? In some problems, you would need to focus on a single object, ignoring the larger system. While in other problems, the system as a whole can be viewed as one big object. In this example, a person is riding on an elevator. You could see that if the problem asks about the pressure the person exerts on the floor, then the problem is just asking about just that person. So the object at interest would just be that one person. You could ignore the outside stuff. However, if the problem asks how much stress is in this cable right here, then we need to realize that the person is adding weight to the elevator, therefore adding stress onto the cable. So we would look at the system at that point so here the object is the system it makes up both the elevator and the person together external versus internal forces when you analyze a system containing two or more forces they can be categorized as either an external or internal force your internal forces act on the system as a whole so it would look something like this Right, it's acting on the system. So things like are, are acting on the system would be gravity. And your next one would be your internal forces or the forces that act um, between the system, inside the system. So here, um, something like the, um, the person is acting force on the elevator, things like that. That would be your internal forces. So here's an example, the tension. The tension in the cable acts as an external force because it is pulling. So force of tension is gonna be your external force. And then your normal force, which is just a person pushing up force normal would be your internal force, okay? Because it is caused uh, from the um, person on the inside. There's gonna be a difference, mass. In chemistry, you see um, mass as just what the object has. But in physics, we talk about it in terms of inertia. Inertia is a property of mass, uh, also a quality of ma uh, matter. But 
very importantly, mass is associated with this word of inertia. So what is inertia? Inertia, in its simplest form, is the tendency of an object to continue doing what it's doing. Okay, So it deals with this idea of um, change okay and how to all right the likelihood likelihood right to change okay that's from a stat mech point of view which is statistical physics that's the best way of thinking about inertia so an object keeps station um, an um, inertia states that it keeps an object stationary if the object is already stationary so if it's um, at rest it's going to stay at rest okay it's not going to change states but if the object is moving at a constant velocity it's going to stay moving okay how likely is that going to happen the more mass an object has you would say it has greater inertia because it has greater inertia it has greater tendency to continue doing what it's doing okay continues okay so this is uh, likely right not to change because it's going to continue the inertia affects the likelihood for it to not change okay but what about if an object has low inertia so uh, oh here let me give you an example for big inertia so a big heart rest will require more gas for it to start moving and it will require more force for it to start slowing down when your car when a big car is just going and a wind blows the car doesn't feel anything because again of its inertia but if an object has low mass it has low inertia and because it has low inertia it, it, it is less likely for it to continue doing what it's doing less likely for it to continue doing what it's doing for an example a small car at rest will require less gas for it to move and if it's moving, it will require less braking force to slow it down. When it is windy, the car will feel more of the wind because it is a smaller car, right? It has less inertia, so it's going to be affected by change more. A great visualization of inertia um, in, involves two types of motion. A, an object moving at constant velocity. Here, a person is in the car and they're driving 60 miles per hour to the right. It hits a block. You notice that the car stops, but right, the car stops because now it is um, at rest. But the op um, the speed of the person continues because there's nothing holding the person. So the person flies until it hits the ground at 60 miles per hour. This is the reason why you should wear a seatbelt because of the law of inertia. An object, right, will continue to move until acted upon by an external force. Okay. It should be your seatbelt that prevents you from flying out of the window. Stationary. Okay, an object at rest. This can be actually be seen as a specific case of constant velocity. So A equals to zero. Okay, uh, the best example you could see is that if you put a coin on top of a cup of water and you pull it straight away, you will see that the coin drops. The reason why the coin drops is because the coin here is at rest. The coin here is at rest. Okay, so it's going to stay here at rest. The reason why it just drops down is because the paper was removed. This is the same type of physics that explains why a, a magician can pull a tablecloth out of um, a table without the plates fl flying away. It is because of this idea. We're going to go over the Newton's law of motion now. The first law, we kind of already talked about it. It states every object continues in its state of rest or in uniform velocity in a straight line as long as there's no net force acting on it. Please understand that the word absence of unbalanced force, balanced force, or no net force are the same thing. Newton's first law does actually does not hold in every reference frame. It only holds in um, the inertia reference frame. So for an example, if your reference frame is actually inside a car, an object such as a cup resting on the dashboard more may begin to move. Magically, you're like, why is the cup moving towards me? There's no force acting on it if you're inside the car, okay? But if you look from outside the car, it will look differently, okay? So 
The cup broke Newton's first law of motion because the object should stay at rest until acted upon by an external force. But again, if you look at it from someone outside of the street, you could see that, oh, the car bro um, breaks down, right? So there was an external force acting, an external force acting on the cup. That's the reason why the cup starts sliding. So it depends on your reference frame and your point of view. Okay? And if you take the reference frame as to be planet Earth, you should be perfectly fine. Here are three questions that help you understand the law of inertia a little bit better. Question number one. If a rocket of a spaceship is in outer space, far from gravity, suddenly loses power and goes off, the spaceship will gradually slow to a stop. That answer would be false. An object that is in motion, okay, like the spaceship, will continue to be... Um, in motion until acted upon by a external force because space is more or less empty there's nothing going to be slowing down the spaceship even if it loses power so if it, if it, it was going it would continue going two you are on a train traveling on a horizontal track and notice that a piece of luggage starts to slide towards you from this observation you can conclude that this train is what it would be slowing down the reason why it is slowing down let me show you the train. Okay. The train is going forward. Here's the piece of luggage, right? The train slows down. So the acceleration is going to be this way, but the luggage is right here. So it's going to go what? It slides to the left. So it's going to slow down. Part three, you're standing in a moving bus facing forward when you suddenly slide as the bus comes to an immediate stop. What forces causes you to slide forward? Again, there's no force causing you to slide um, forward, okay? It is just a result of an external force on the car, right? But you were already moving, okay? Newton's second law. This law is an object of mass m will undergo an acceleration of a when subject to a net force. So you could see it as on the AP physics formula sheet, you see this as a equals to summation of all your forces divided by the mass. Or if you just multiply both sides by m, you should get summation of force equals to mass times acceleration. So you can see this as force equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration will be directly proportioned to the net force applied and Okay, what that means is that A and F are directly proportioned because they're both on top, directly proportioned. And mass is inversely proportioned because it is on the bottom and it is to the power one. So it's called inverse proportion. The force and acceleration vector point in the same direction. Summation of F is a summation of all the forces acting on the object. Please understand that the acceleration is not due to any one force, but, but is due to a summation of all the forces. This is why this is a considered a summation right here. This is of all the forces right here. So the unit for force. Um, it is just considered newtons. Newtons is defined. The mass needs to be in kilograms and the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Okay, please understand you cannot use miles per hour. Okay, that's a velocity. It has to be meters per second squared. It has to be an acceleration. Some proportionality that we can look at about how things change when we set up the equation of A equals to summation of your forces divided by your mass. If the mass increases, the acceleration will decrease because mass is in the bottom of the fraction. It is in the denominator. If mass decreases, then the acceleration will increase because again, mass is on the bottom of the is on the bottom of the fraction. As the bottom of the fraction goes smaller, the number overall goes higher. Okay. If the amount of force increases, the acceleration will increase because they are directly proportioned. And if the amount of force decreases, then the acceleration will also decrease. Again, A and F, summation of all your forces are directly proportioned. 
So if one goes up, the other one's going to go up. If one goes down, the other one's going to go down. Okay? Mass and acceleration, this is inverse proportion. Okay? If one goes down, the other one's going to go up. Okay? Or if one goes up, the other one has to go down. That's what it means to inverse be inversely proportioned. One of the misnomers is this idea of weight. Weight is a considered to be a force. So mass and weight are not the same thing. When you step on a scale, you're like 100 pounds, 200 pounds. That is actually a force. It's not your mass. Pounds is actually a force, not a mass. Mass is just straight kilograms. Mass is a property of an object by itself, and it is referred to the object's inertia. Weight, on the other hand, is a force. It is by the pull of gravity acting on the object. Any object inside a gravitational field will experience the force of weight. It is from the mass being pulled by another mass. That is the gravitational field. So the example to best understand the difference between weight and force is this. If you were... Um, if you were taken to the moon, you will weigh only one six as much as you did on Earth. So if you weigh um, 100 pounds on Earth and on Mars, no, on the moon, you would weigh one six of this. So I do not know what's 100 times one six. Hold on. So you would weigh 16 pounds. Okay. Because again, the gravitational... Um, field is lower there the force of gravity is lower there but please understand that your mass did not change you're still you nothing changed except your location that is the best way you can think about um, the force of gravity weight and mass lastly newton's third law newton's third law can be seen as for every action considered the action force there's an equal and, uh, and opposite reaction that is called the reaction force please understand that these aren't real names action force and reaction force it's just associated with um, the first thing and the result thing okay understand that the magnitude of the action and reaction forces are equal so if one is 50 newtons the other one also has to be 50 newtons the direction of the action and reaction forces are opposite so let me show you let's say the force um, the hand exerted the force exerted on the hand by the desk so here let's say this is 50 newtons this way this also has to be 50 newtons this way but one of them is in the opposite direction so it has to be negative a way that you can see this is that this a person is walking on the floor the person's foot force of the person on the ground on the person's foot so here you could say that this is the um, action and this is going to be the re um, reaction so this is the resulting force so the f force of the ground on the person's foot is the same thing as the force of the person's foot on the ground notice i just flip the noun Although that, the um, although that the forces are equal, the accelerations are not the same. The reason why the accelerations are not the same is because the masses are the same, are, are different. The mass, the mass of the hand here is different from the mass of the table. So if the mass of this hand is only, let's say, 10 kilograms, but the table is, let's say, um, 25 kilograms, or oh, the hand is be less the hand should be like two kilograms and the table is like 25 kilograms if you plug this in okay right here f equals to ma you will see that the force is 50 newtons the mass is two the acceleration is a so a here would be equal to 25 so this hand would be experiencing an acceleration of 25 meters per second squared but if you look at the table f is equal to ma the force is 50, the mass is 25, the acceleration is A. Divide by 25, you see that acceleration is 2 meters per second. Okay. Notice that the acceleration is different for it, even though that the even though the forces are the same. Okay. This is what this video was for. Now we could look at some conceptual questions. 
In a collision between a huge SUV and a small hybrid car, the SUV exerts a large force on the hybrid than the hybrid exerts on the SUV. What is that? That is considered to be false. Okay. The SUV on the hybrid is the same thing as the hybrid on the SUV. Newton's third law. Nine. If a pound, if you pound a feather with a hammer, which one feels a greater force? Again, the size of the force is actually going to be the same. Because of Newton's third law. 10. You're pushing box G. Let me draw the person here so you could get a better visualization of who's pushing it. Here's the person. He pushes on box G. Causing both box to slide on the, on the floor as shown in the figure. The reaction force to your push is what? So just look at it. The force of U. So let me write um, U for Y. U on box G is going to be equal to the force of the G box on you. There you go. So remember, you just flip the nouns. All right, there you go. That is Newton's third law and everything that you need to know about Newton's law of motion, part one.